Today we're going to look at an introduction to the elements of fiction. Let's start off with character. Now, if we're going to define a character, a character is a textual representation of a human being, or it could be a creature. But then how do we get to know a character? How do we learn more about them? Through their dialogue, what it is that is spoken aloud, what it is that they say. We learn a character through their actions, the things that they are doing. We learn them often through their thoughts. If you have from a third person point of view, you're going to hear their thoughts and their feelings. And you can also learn a character through narration. If it is some sort of omniscient or some other sort of point of view that isn't first person, you're probably going to get more information from the narration about that character. For example, if we take a look at Disney's Finding Nemo, why would we be so interested in the characters and their problems if they're just aquatic animals and computer graphics? If you take a look at a lot of Disney's movies, they're going to usually be animals as main characters. Usually we wouldn't think that they have such complex issues such as human beings would have. And yet we find these movies fascinating. We like these movies because we look at the character's thoughts. We have a great narration. We listen to their dialogue. Anything that we would be considering as characterization for a human, we can also push over onto non-human creature type characters. Our next element of fiction would be plot. Now a plot is the series of events that give a story its meaning and effect. Now, event is comprised of a conflict and a resolution. With your plot line, there has to be some sort of meaning for your character to be there. So usually they're going to have some sort of conflict, some sort of problem, some sort of trouble is going to come up for your character or characters. And sooner or later, we're going to have to have a resolution to that problem. You have to solve the problem at some point in time. If you don't solve the problem, the story would just go on forever and ever, and your character isn't going to grow and learn. For example, let's take another Disney movie. How about Disney Cinderella? When we take a look at the first conflict in the plot, Cinderella's father dies. So what would be the resolution? Somebody's got to be there to take care of Cinderella. She's still a child. So her stepmother becomes the guardian. Now there's a second conflict that comes with that because her stepmother and her stepsisters are mean to her. Instead of treating her like a member of the family, they treat her like a servant. So what is Cinderella's resolution to that conflict? Because she can't befriend her new family, she befriends the mice, she befriends the, uh, the birds, she befriends all of the other creatures that are around the home. What's the third conflict? Well, now we're getting into the major part of the story. Cinderella would like to go to the ball. She's heard from her stepmother and stepsisters that there is a ball at the castle with the prince. She'd like to go to it with them. What's the resolution? Well, stepmother says that she's allowed to go if she finishes her chores and has a suitable dress. Well, there's a fourth conflict. Once she finishes her chores and she finishes a dress, her stepsisters ruin her dress so she, she can't go to the ball. And then we have a resolution. Our fairy godmother steps in and saves the day. Our next element of fiction is known as setting. That would be the story's time and place. We have to have our characters be somewhere, and it has to be a considerable sort of time that we are able to fantasize about or we are able to realize about. Same thing with a place. The place has to be a suitable place for your characters that we as the viewers or the readers can fantasize about or can realize. For example, let's take the Shrek movies. Uh, when and where does it take place? Well, we know it takes place in some medieval times. It's not very specific as to when, but we know it is certainly well before our time. When we take a look at the, uh, the types of transportation that they use, like carriages, when we take a look at the types of weapons, like say the guards around the kings have, um, we know we're around medieval times. And we are in a place called Duloc. Now, eventually, when we go into the other Shrek series, we go to other settings, such as Far, Far Away for Fiona. But we're in different kingdoms, um, and Duloc is one of these fantasy kingdoms that is made up. Our next element of fiction is known as theme. Now, theme is the meaning or concept we're left with after reading a story. What does that mean? How can I figure it out? Well, you want to ask yourself, what is the author suggesting that is true about human nature 
and true about life. We kind of consider theme as life's lessons. What is the character learning? What are they growing from? What is the sense of human nature that we as the reader or the viewer can gather? What are they learning and what can we learn from the characters? For example, some of the themes that we would have in classic Disney movies, again, such as Pirates of the Caribbean, good will always triumph over evil. Even though we have pirates who don't exactly follow the laws, per se, we do see that they are attempting to help out others. And so anytime we come up against someone who is attempting to conflict us with our good versus evil, good will always triumph in the end for Pirates of the Caribbean. Don't judge a person before you get to know him or her. Again, when some of our major characters are going to be people who follow the law, some of them might not exactly follow the law, but in our Pirates of the Caribbean, usually the law is kind of corrupt. And so that's why we usually cheer on the pirates, such as Captain Jack, because even though he's not a perfect, he's a very flawed character, we don't want to judge them before we actually get to know their personality. And then, of course, love can motivate people to take risks. Throughout all of the series of Pirates of the Caribbean, we have love stories going through uh, throughout. And these are very, very classic themes that we see not only in Pirates of the Caribbean, but in a lot of other stories. The idea that good will triumph over evil, to not judge a person before you actually learn everything about them. And then love can motivate people to take risks. Love stories are very common. Our next uh, element of fiction is point of view. And point of view refers to, refers to the source of the narrative voice, otherwise known as the person telling the story. It answers the question, who is telling the story? Let's take, for example, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. And the reason why I want to use that one is that our title of the story is about J. Gatsby, The Great Gatsby. Gatsby is not the one telling us the story. Nick Carraway, and not Jay Gatsby, gives his thoughts, opinions, and feelings from the first-person narrative. More commonly, you would see people giving us their thoughts being the main character themselves. You look back at Disney, you, you're following around Cinderella. She's the one telling her story. Uh, when you look back at Shrek, you're following uh, Universal's Shrek around the story. You're getting his points of view. But sometimes you're going to have somebody else telling the story. So don't always assume your main character is who is the point of view. Lastly, we have got style, and style refers to the manner in which the author tells his or her story. Sometimes you're going to have more elaborate, more formalized language, and sometimes it's a bit simpler in style. For example, maybe perhaps we're going to look at two uh, love stories where we've got conflicts between uh, or prejudices between families or between races that would be Romeo and Juliet and it would also be the house on Mango Street very similar themes but when we look at the style first of all Romeo and Juliet have very elaborate language when Shakespeare wrote out Romeo and Juliet people were paying money to go see plays to hear these very dignified speeches they wanted to hear a formal poem they wanted the elaborate language the house on Mango Street is written in a quite simple language. We have somebody whose English is not their first language as the main character. We're following a, a very young person throughout the story. So the language is going to be defined by the person telling us the story. So you have elaborate language in Romeo and Juliet versus a very simple language in the house on Mango Street. Another difference in their style, even though, again, we've got similar characters, even though we have uh, a similar themes, we have a 400 plus year old drama in Romeo and Juliet. Their setting is going to reflect that. Their characters are going to reflect that. The same thing in the house on Mango Street. The novel's only about 40 years old. Therefore, your characters are going to reflect 40 years old or less. It's going to be very contemporary. The characters and the setting are going to reflect that it's only a 40-year-old novel. So when we look at style, we take into context how is it specifically written and for whom. Well, that should do for your elements of fiction today, guys. If you liked what you see, please leave a like and maybe perhaps comment on my channel what more you would like to see. And I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by.